From our studios at historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. Uh, start of a great new year. 2021 is here with us, and with me here is Andrew Fisher. He's the CEO of the Bedell Family YMCA. And uh, Andrew, welcome, first of all. Ned, yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. I well, guess always. Me, but happy new year to you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Well, here we are. We made it. New year. <laughs> so, yeah, let's let's take a deep breath, pat ourselves on the back a yeah. little bit, and uh, buckle up for a fun year ahead of us. I yeah. think that's the way we got to look at it. Oh, indeed. And and all the, the bumps and everything, the Bedell Y, yeah. Healthy Living Program Center in Milford uh, that you had in the last year, shutting down having to do different things limiting things and yeah and here's a prospect of uh the light at the end of the tunnel right and now as we start 21 i know generally we have some kind of a membership drive but you you've got a little twist on that this year yeah exactly it's you know with all the starts stops pauses um scale up scale down types of things we you know we we've saw a significant portion of our membership go away through this and we're, we're reaching out now to say yes, we're welcoming new members. We're also welcoming those members that we've, uh, we've lost through 2020 yeah. to come on back. And uh, you're right, we're doing a two week uh, new member or returning member drive uh, where we waive the joiner's fee of, of uh, coming into the, the membership there. And uh, along with that, uh, we have some other things going on just as January traditionally is a, a big time for people, the resolutions, mm -hmm. oftentimes we all have that internal thought with ourselves, say, hey, I'm gonna start to exercise a little bit more, maybe eat a little healthier, yeah. do some different things, create some new good <laughs> habits, so to speak. And uh, so we also have a personal training uh, special going on during that same time frame too. And so kind of twofold, welcoming people back into yeah. uh, the organization if they um, had left for some reason or another. Um, obviously with uh, all things COVID, that's still a fluid situation and we uh, respect that of, of folks too. And so if you have questions, concerns on what that looks like, happy to talk with them about that, of you know how we've readjusted facilities, and done some different things to, to help yeah. people feel more comfortable. Well, and we were talking about before we got going here, you know, and I'll be in there different times of the day, it's never one set time, but you know, not long after reopening and so forth, um, you can tell that some members have dropped off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've certainly seen here in the last few weeks, and of course we're all masked up now, except when we're on the machines and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, I've seen more and more people that I used to see there coming into the Y again. Yeah, I think in, in some levels there is, um, there's been an uptick in terms of usage and, and some people coming back. Um, just even as restrictions have changed, uh, we see those those changes with us internally as well. Anytime that there's things dialed back from a state level or national level, um, we see loss of membership or people um, not returning just as, as things are allowed to take uh, place again, we start to see more people come in. So um, yeah, we're just uh, continuing to try to, to play within the, the guidelines of what we can offer, what we can't and, and work through that. And so. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to 2021, welcoming a lot of familiar faces back. Uh, number one thing when I, when I see people, um, you know, whether it be in public facility, phone calls, anything like that, it's the number one thing people are missing is people yeah. and the connectivity and conversations. And that's one thing that we've always prided ourselves on is being a, a community within a community. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and those are things that people say, you know, I really look forward to when I can sit in the lobby and have coffee with my friends again yeah. and, and do some of those things. And so um, optimistic 2021 is going to be the year that we can do that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of positive things on the horizon. Yeah. And, you know, we don't talk enough about, you know, obviously there's the the physical healthiness of, of ourselves, mm -hmm. but, you know, that socialization that, uh, you know, a, a lot of the, uh, the elderly get uh, when they've been members and you're talking, sitting out there and with the coffee and walking the track in groups, doing yeah. aquatics classes, all these different things. That, especially in the time of the year when we're indoors a lot, yeah. uh, huge part of the, the mental health. Absolutely, I mean, uh, as we enter this time of the year, it's, it's kind of gray and gloomy at times, <laughs> and there's some of us go to work when it's dark and we go home when it's dark. <laughs> and, uh, 
And, you know, uh, we have seen a lot of transition of people coming back for some of those things where it used to be, hey, we'll sit in the lobby and have coffee. Now it's we wear masks and we walk on the track yeah. and, and we talk to each other while um, we do those things. And just uh, adapting to the new environment to have some of those relationships again. And, uh, and so that's been positive to see start to begin to happen and blossom again. Yeah. Um, just looking forward to those things uh, happening more and more because relationships is, is really what we, uh, we strive for as people yeah and uh, that's something that I've always enjoyed about the work that we do that um, it's a catalyst for those things new friendships um, different experiences things like that yeah and I've seen it sign in the why that you know you can uh, belong anywhere but uh, at uh, the why you're part of a family yeah exactly it's uh, it's always been that you can you, you can work out anywhere but um, you can belong to this um, this community and so yeah, it's, a, it's an important fabric of mental health, physical health, um, especially all the things we're, we're facing right now. So Yeah, yeah. where are we at on like, uh, like classes and so yeah, forth? Yeah, so fitness classes uh, are able to, to happen right now. Um, really where that's at is we have capacity limits on uh, how many people can be in spaces based by square footage. Um, you know, and, and some of those things are limited down in terms of the number of classes that we have available to offer one some staffing yeah. um, not everybody's comfortable in the COVID world of coming back and doing those things but uh, those are available uh, swim lessons things of that nature those are happening again uh, youth sports are still are still going on and so we'll have another session of basketball starting here in the month of February uh, swim team has continued to take place and um, and so some of those things it's been uh, it'll be something great to reflect on just to see the resili resiliency of how things have continued to, to move forward through such a challenging time. Yeah. Um, in other programs, it'll be exciting to, to relaunch things. Um, yeah. Just as uh, people, are, you know, will be excited to do some things that they haven't been able to do for a while. Right. And, you know, like any nonprofit, uh, the why depends a lot on your volunteers. Yeah. How are you set for volunteers with whether it's youth sports or any of these things did you lose any during covid and need more you know um uh, it's funny you bring up volunteers to send an email out to uh our, our board members here today just thanking them for you know all of the flexibility support uh time that they've given us in 2020 uh you know during a, a time frame where it's been challenging for everybody personally and professionally to uh to make dedicated time to to help us navigate it i would say volunteers are crucial uh, at all times, but even more now than ever, yeah. just with uh, how things have been going. i uh, love to have more volunteers involved with the organization, whether it be from a standpoint of coaching youth sports, um, helping with a, a committee within the organization, um, any of those kind of things. So always seeking people that want to give back with time and talent. And uh, so we're always open to that conversation of how can you get involved. Right. And, you know, obviously... Uh, the loss of um, Camp Foster last year, for the most part lost anyway. Yeah. Uh, huge financial setback for the Y. And I know we can't talk about the contingency plans, but just to say you and the board do have some yeah. moving forward and, and Josh out there and everything. Yeah, Camp Foster in 2021, our goal is to have um, camp this summer. Uh, resident camp was lost in 2020. 2021 we're, we're putting together a lot of different scenarios of what we can do based off of what current health regulations are and yeah. the reality is we're only going to do what we can and um, and our goal is to have kids have that experience again um, in 2021 and so excited for those things in a lot of ways um, registration is, is somewhat a standstill because we have it um, pretty well full yeah. in terms of where we feel comfortable that we can be at this point and then as we get an understanding of how much more we can take we'll open up more and uh, and so hopefully those are some exciting um, decisions that we have to make well you know we're at a little bit better situation planning for it this year obviously it was all a surprise last year yeah. but having things st shut down in March and then you're only really two months from season uh, where we are tourism area you know you're really cranking things to try to figure out how to handle it 
now here we are six months the first resident camp is mid-june yeah so you've got time to see where vaccines are going percentages maybe things will be relaxed who knows but you've got time to work through that anyway right yeah we learned a lot of things through last summer um we operated day camps uh throughout the entire summer at camp foster implemented a lot of new procedures um added hand washing stations all over 200 plus acres of property and, and different things like that to, to make things uh, work and comply with some new new guidelines. And, and so, yeah, uh, our planning has looked a lot different for 2021 than it did in 2020. I remember it was a, it was a weekly, um, we'd have national conferences, conference webinars, different things like that. Everything was changing as we all know. And so, yes, uh, we're feeling far more confident today um, about having camp in 2021. Yeah. And I like to remind people that, um, you know, for those who, oh, I can't afford a Y membership, oh, I can't mm -hmm. afford to send my kid or kids to Camp Foster, uh, scholarships available uh, to help that happen too. Absolutely. There's, uh, so for YMC membership or program participation, we have what we call the Strong Kids Campaign. Um, it's our annual campaign where we raise funds for scholarships to um, help provide that need and um, and so those are available at any time you can apply for them you just go to the facility uh, complete the application process right. and it's pretty simple we also have that for uh, Camp Foster it's called Project 130 yeah. it's our goal to get a, an extra 130 kids to camp who maybe couldn't uh, afford to otherwise and so both of those are available and and just even talking about that 2021 is right around the corner and uh, by the time this comes out, it might be 2021 <laughs> actually. And, and so we'll be uh, kicking off our campaigning for our annual campaign here uh, in the very near future because um, as we know, those things are going to continue yeah. to be a need and, and it might be a greater need than ever um, based off of what COVID's done to uh, our local area. So uh, there'll be more to come in that way, but yep. yes, um, those opportunities are out there and. If you have interest in supporting those things, by all means, we'd love to have that conversation too. All right. Well, in the meantime, uh, it's a new year. Uh, you've got the, the great um, new membership, mm -hmm. uh, renewing your previous membership, uh, and this is the time to do it. We've all got our resolutions, and, and one of them is, I want to get out more. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, it's an opportunity to to um, get ready for 2021 um, as you feel more comfortable in, in being out and doing those things. Yep. Absolutely. Um, to those members who have stuck with us from the very beginning of the whole pandemic, uh, bottom of my heart, thank you. And, uh, you know, we've had a number of them who probably haven't set foot in the facility since that uh, the pandemic has started because of, you know, comfort levels of what's going on and say a big thank you to you for just continuing to support. And uh, I, I just look forward to seeing so many uh, familiar faces here yeah. moving forward, so yeah. Yeah, and I am confident that you will and we all will when it comes Absolute, to the Liddell-wise. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if people have questions, if they wanna look into more of the, the programs, memberships, uh, what's the website to go to? So you can, um, YMCA of the Okabojis.com, BedellFamilyYMCA.com. Uh, you can check those out uh, if you're interested in Camp Foster, CampFosterYMCA.com. Uh, social media, Facebook is probably your, your best tool to get to any of those uh, organizations as well, whether it be Bedell Family YMCA or Camp Foster. As you mentioned earlier, with Milford Healthy Living Program Center yep. in the southern parts of the lakes and uh, opportunities to um, stay. Um, Fit there as well. That's right. Yep, yep. It is truly the YMCA of the Okabojis. Yep, yeah, yeah. We are a, a regional organization. It is not one town, and and that's the way I've since the day I moved here in 2007. I've always looked at the lakes as as one community, and uh, we're a proud part of that community. Yeah, and we all got to be part of the the Y family. So for sure, happy of that. All right, my friend. Well, happy New Year to you, Same and to you, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And just keep things cranking at our, our Bedell Y. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure, indeed. Andrew Fisher has been here with us today. We want to thank him and everybody at the Y, staff, volunteers, families. The Bedell Y provides so much to our Iowa Great Lakes. We want to thank Andrew for being with us. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast.
Okaboji broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you by the Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake, Pure Fishing in Spirit Lake, Last Touch Painting and Cleaning providing interior, exterior, house painting and professional cleaning services in Spirit Lake, Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman and Erica Wachholz. Duckies Marine and Motorsports, repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, dream big, plan wisely, live well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Attorney Bethany Brands at Brands Law Office in Spirit Lake. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. Be Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. The YMCA of the Okabojis is the Bedell Family YMCA, building strong families and strong communities.